Abby and I are off to our next adventure. We'll see what awaits us. Living full-time on the road, I have everywhere to be and nowhere to be at the same time. That feeling can be overwhelming and even anxiety-inducing. And after some time trying to chase that feeling, I realized that the only place to be is exactly where I am. Home becomes the present moment because simply there's nothing else to grab onto. There are no other tethers holding me down anywhere. Having lived on the road for three years, I learned that giving myself a list of places to go was putting myself on a hamster wheel for no apparent reason. The destinations never gave me the satisfaction of having arrived anywhere. Life is not a journey. The late Alan Watts describes this notion best. That existence, the physical universe, is basically playful. There is no necessity for it whatsoever. It isn't going anywhere. That is to say, it doesn't have some destination that it ought to arrive at. But, but it is best understood by analogy with music. Because music as an art form, is essentially playful. We say you play the piano. You don't work the piano. In music, one doesn't make the end of a composition. If that were so, the best conductors would be those who played fastest. <laughs> and there would be composers who wrote only finales. <laughs> People go to concert just to hear one crashing chord. Because that's the end. <laughs> Same way in dancing. You don't aim at a particular spot in the room. That's where you should arrive. The whole point of the dancing is the dance. Now, but we don't see that as 
something brought by our education into our everyday conduct. We've got a system, and yeah, you go to kindergarten, you know, and that's a great thing because when you finish that, you'll get into first grade. And then come on, first grade leads to second grade and so on, and then you get out of grade school, you've got high school, and it's revving up, the thing is coming, then you're going to go to college, and by Jove, then you get into graduate school, and when you're through with graduate school, you go out to join the world. And then you get into some racket where you're selling insurance, and they've got that quota to make, and you're going to make that, and all the time, the thing is coming, it's coming, it's coming, that great thing, the, the success you're working for. Then when you wake up one day about 40 years old, you say, my God, I've arrived. <laughs> I'm there. And you don't feel very different from what you always felt. And there's a slight letdown because you feel there's a hoax. And there was a hoax, a dreadful hoax. They made you miss everything by expectation. Look at the people who live to retire and put those savings away. And then when they're 65, they don't have any energy left. They're more or less impotent. <laughs> because we simply cheated ourselves the whole way down the line. We thought of life by analogy with a journey, with a pilgrimage, which had a serious purpose at the end. And the thing was to get to that end. Success or whatever it is, or maybe heaven after your death. But we missed the point the whole way along. It was a musical thing and you were supposed to sing or to dance while the music was being played. We've upped our caravanning game with walkie-talkies. <laughs> walkie-talkie time! Walkie-talkie time! Testing, one, two, three. I can hear you just fine. Perfect. All right, you follow me? Okay. Sounds good. Be a good girl, Ray. You guard the bus. Oh, we were just over there. <laughs> Whew, don't mind me, I'm a little out of breath. Um, <laughs> the Abby and I woke up early this morning. We drove into Capitol Reef National Park. We went to the Cassidy Arch Trailhead. We were one of the first people to do it. There was only one other truck in the parking lot. And we're already breaking Already out of breath. <laughs> but it feels really good. Yes, it does. So I can't wait to show you. Cassidy Arch. But first, we should check on the dogs. <laughs> hey guys. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Chee Chee Rio. <laughs> yeah, and the parking lot's already filling up, so I'm really glad we got here early. 
the sun hasn't even hit where we are in the rocks yet, yeah. so it's nice and cool. As I practice looking at my life like a dance or a beautiful song rather than a journey, I've found myself falling madly in love with all of life's little nuances. The sound of a river has never felt so peaceful. Having a friend has never felt so sweet. It might sound a little silly, but it feels liberating to get emotional about a flower on a branch, the first sip of coffee in the morning, or the color of Rio's eyes. When did we all decide that things had to be large and important in order to justify feeling deeply about them? The landscapes seem to carve me, as the river once carved this rock. Deeper and deeper I repel into the crevices of my heart's canyons. It is so wonderful to feel so alive. It is Sunday morning. <laughs> Abby and I are in the bus with our coffee. And we're about to watch our premiere. I'm so I'm excited. I'm so excited. This Abby is so fun. always releases her videos at the same time. She's mm -hmm. so good about that, but she doesn't premiere it. So this I've is... convinced her to try it out. I was super inspired by this. So <laughs> we're doing this. We're trying this. We're trying it. It's really fun. I'm feeling the hype. And you get excited, yeah. right? Yeah. People, look at everybody <laughs> in the live chat with all the hearts and smiles. <laughs> I can't wait. I got to get my coffee, get in my seat. <laughs> but either way, you're spending a thousand bucks on the composting toilet, which is a lot. But Not if you I'm DIY it! it. <laughs> uh, Commentary on uh, Charlie's my live. My composting toilet was less than 200. Like, oh! Do you, you have a video on it? Yes. I'm sure you do in your build series. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find that like, in 